sometimes that helps to sort of turn the painting around. So otherwise you can get stuck in certain images and composition. Sometimes it's a case of ruining the painting to bring it forward. So, I mean, I'm, I'm liking this painting more this way now that it's with the blue. Well, I, I moved to Sydney from Auckland back in 2016, the beginning of it. I had done the other art fair in Sydney uh, at the end of 2015 and it was really successful for me. So I, I, I was kind of ready for a change. So in my head, it was kind of like, if I could afford to move over here and be a full-time artist, that I'll, I'll try it. Um, and I had, a, I had a solo show booked with St. Cloche Gallery in Paddington. So that was maybe six months after I moved and I had probably just enough money to get by until that show. So I, I, I did need to do well. And luckily the works sold throughout the show and I was able to keep going and then build a bit of momentum. Um, and actually I was able to have my studio in, in the garage of St. Cloche. So that was really nice being part of being part of the community and sort of getting a feel for Sydney. It's a really nice part of um, part of Sydney. Uh, then a couple of year, years later, I moved studios to Alexandria, um, sort of just down the road to a space close to Green Square, but that was now getting bulldozed. So I've been in this studio now for a little bit over a year. And I really like it. It's really nice having the window. And so probably about 18 months ago, I, I decided I wanted to start um, an abstract series, probably because my painting taste had sort of changed over the years. And I mean, I've, I collect a little bit of art. I mean, like nothing really expensive, but the stuff that I've been buying has been abstract paintings. So I figured I wanted to have a voice in it as well. So that was kind of one of the main reasons why. So I, I bought a roller canvas and I just started painting. And then it kind of just gathered momentum and I really enjoyed it. I guess I had been sort of, I've been going to New York quite a bit over the last four years, so probably five times in the last four years and just seeing the big galleries over there and the museums, it just sort of, it kind of did, it did push me to make that move. And I, I wanted, I had a desire to, to sort of, to make my mark in it as well. Uh, I'm actually finding it quite, it's quite difficult, like even though the work is a lot less detailed than my other work, but I sort of, I know what I'm doing when it comes to painting the people and I, I'm just, it's quite automatic and I just put on music and I listen. I'm not really thinking about what I'm doing and to, I know how to make a painting work and to finish it and to move on to the next one. And I, I guess I've been doing it for 10 years. I've been, that's what I'm comfortable in. And so now when coming to these abstract works, I find it quite difficult to know how to finish them and to make something simple work can be quite, can be harder than to make something with a lot of detail work. When I first started, I probably used the Kooning as a starting sort of point. Um, and I would, I would do a, a fast automatic type drawing of like lines of a black black acrylic back then and then I'd come over it with oil paint so I'd try to I'd try to think of the color palette before starting and back in the first sort of series I was try I would often finish a work 
I'd give myself the whole day and I'd, I'd often have a result at the end. It would either work or it wouldn't. But I then moved into having the seascape more as the motif. And I, I had a solo show in LA of those works. And I did enjoy doing that, but then I found I was giving myself too much limitations and too many rules. Like I didn't sort of, so then that was starting to become boring as well. So I've moved back to the initial series and I've continued on, but I've, I've tried to eliminate the outline. So I had a black outline in the first lot. So I've tried to eliminate that, and now uh, I'm, it, it takes me a lot longer to finish a work, so I'm sort of working on it over four or five weeks now, because when I put down a layer, if I'm not happy with it, it needs to dry for a week before I go back over top. I try to stick to a routine, um, and I'm normally here by about quarter to nine, and I'll make my coffee when I first get here. Uh, I decided that I'd rather work nine to five when everyone else is working, just because I can. And by having set times, it means that you get more work done. Like if I, if I didn't have a proper routine, I know I'd do less hours in a week. That's just how it has been in other years. When I painted in New Zealand, I wouldn't have a routine and then I'd start later and later every day. And then still finish at the same time and I've got used to that routine so I don't really like when it comes to five o'clock I'm normally pretty ready to leave unless unless there's like a person or something that I'm still working on so I'll try to finish that and now that it's daylight savings has just started I'll probably be more likely to stay a bit longer because it's also like when it's starting to get dark in the winter at five I want to get on my bike and ride home before it's completely dark. <laughs> so often I'll have to come in here on maybe a Sunday, I quite like to come in. Um, and that's when I'll tackle the abstracts. So the, the next show I have for the abstract work will be at the other art fair in Sydney. I, I wanna have my career in New York. So I see that as like the, that's where everything's kind of leading to. I feel it's important for me to keep on going back to remind myself of that goal and it's a different sort of, it's a different world to the art world here in Australia and New Zealand. I mean it's kind of, it kind of runs on its own down here but it's not, it's a bit disconnected to the international um, art world. There's definitely a, a good idea for me and I, often I'll go and I'll get a sublet there for a month during the summer over there. Mainly to miss a bit of winter here and just kind of refresh things. So when I come back here, it kind of feels like I'm starting fresh for the year. So this is probably one of the biggest abstracts I've done on canvas anyway. Um, I've just been numbering this series rather than trying to come up with titles for every work. So I, didn't, I don't really want a title to determine what you think about the painting as well. So this is number 15. Um, and it, it kind of just, it came together quite quickly really. Like um, it worked from early on. Probably, it was really nice working at the largest scale, but because of the size of my studio, I can't really do lots this size. It was fun to do um, and quite often like figurative elements kind of pop out not on purpose but they just kind of appear and then I might try to take away that element and sometimes add more like accentuate it a bit more so it just depends like this this painting kind of has cityscape type elements to it so it's kind of a collection of a chaotic city really um, it's got like aspects of new york as well like with the water towers that they have on top of the buildings um, 
this painting here. This was number 13, so I'd done that not long before I'd started this painting. And it kind of was, it was a move back, back to the initial series that I started um, when I first started the abstracts, because I kind of moved away and start, worked with the seascape as the motif. So I, this one actually started with that in mind, because you can see the horizon line at the top there. But then I've kind of just disregarded that. They kind of um, have a mind of their own, and once I start, they'll go. The painting will take me in the direction that it needs to go in, and it, it's really difficult to try to do to to replicate it. Even with the colours or anything, they just don't really. It just doesn't happen. Like if it was if it was easy and every painting was turning out the way you wanted and the way you envisioned from the start, it will soon get boring. So it's all sort of part of the challenge.